Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, One Blessed Mess. I am Christy and I am a first year homeschooling mom of four kids, ages nine, eight, five, and 18 months. And today I am so excited because I am collaborating with Megan from Pennies and Salt and some other wonderful women to tell you about what I am using for my kids for homeschooling. And I thought that the best way, since I am homeschooling three kids at three different grade levels, to do this video is I am actually going to take you along with me and show you what I use throughout the day for my kindergartner, Maddie. Maddie is five years old and she is using the good and the beautiful for language arts and math. And we're also doing a couple of other things interspersed in there as well. So I wanted to take you along with me as I teach my daughter Maddie. And I hope to do other videos where I take you along with me to show you what I use for my second grader and my third grader as well. But those will be in other videos. And today I am just going to focus on my kindergartner. So I hope that you enjoy this video. I will put Megan's channel down below and I will also put the playlist down below so that you can check out all the other wonderful videos that are in this collaboration. All right, let's get our homeschooling day started. All right, we are getting started with our day here. I have the other two doing their morning work and then for Maddie, what we do in the mornings is I give her a journal entry question. Since she doesn't know how to write yet, um, I write it out for her and then she dictates the answer. So today's journal entry question was, what is your favorite school subject? And she said, I like language arts because I get to trace things and learn how to read. And then I just have her draw a little picture below. And this is a really simple little thing that we do in the mornings that kind of just gets your brain to wake up. And we're also listening to an audiobook while my kids do their morning work. We are in the middle of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone right now. So we listen to about 15 minutes of a chapter and then the kids do their quiet work in the mornings. Do you like doing your journal question? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Yes, it looks very nice. I think that this will be a nice thing to look back on as she gets older to see the answers to some of these questions. And I just choose these questions randomly. You can even just Google journal entry questions for kids and there are a ton of different questions that you can ask. Part of our morning work is handwriting and we use level K, the good and the beautiful. So Maddie is doing... What is that? P's and Q's and writing a little sentence and drawing a picture. They love the pictures in the good and the beautiful handwriting. All my kids use the good and the beautiful. And that is, I think, their favorite part about it is the doodles. She'll usually do a couple of pages first thing in the morning as we're listening to our story as part of our morning work. Hey! Hey! You're loud! I wouldn't be surprised if you turn out better than What are you doing? Are you going to are you going to cook me something? Yeah, a little tornado has been through this homeschooling room already today. So, what are you doing? You say hi, you're going to sing us a song? You don't <laughs> Yeah, she is our homeschooling entertainment, isn't she? <laughs> the kids also do a memory verse first thing in the morning. We go through it first thing in the morning and last thing at night. I think that was my toddler. She just probably pulled something down. I <laughs> heard a huge crash. Um, but we do it first thing in the morning and last thing, I said at night, but I meant in the afternoon. I do a new verse every week and we just do it until they memorize it. If it's a longer verse and they can't get it in a week, then we will go ahead and take that through to a second week. And so that's what we do as part of our morning work. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Psalms 19.14 Are you memorizing it too? You are? 
Can anybody say it without me? Okay, let me. Okay. Um, if I open my mouth. And the med and the meditation of my heart be separable, be separable, be separable, and my die and die size. Um, oh Lord, oh Lord, my strength, let me give and my and my read. Redeemer. Redeemer. What in what verse is this? Psalms nineteen fourteen. Great job. All right, moving on to the good and the beautiful language arts. Um, she did pre K at the beginning of the year. We flew through that, and now she is on level K primer. Even though she is in kindergarten, I wanted to start her off with the foundations, and I am so glad that we started with pre K because it gave her a really solid foundation to move up to reading, which she just started doing. So that's really exciting. We are actually on the second to the last lesson for this book. So I already put an order in to level K and that is supposed to be coming early next week. So I am really excited. Let me know if you want me to do a flip through and do a lesson with me for level K language arts from the good and the beautiful. I would love to do that for you. But today we are doing lesson 33. So are you ready for this Maddie Cakes? Yeah. I forgot to mention that this first reading book comes with the Level K Primer, and we are not going to be using it uh, today in this lesson, and she's already read all of the stories in it. Can you point to each letter in this purple box and tell me its sound and say its name? What is that? X. Mm-hmm. All right, just keep moving C. on. No, that's not C. S. Yes, and what does it say? Good job. S. All right, just go ahead and use this page, but can you write the numbers 10, 11, and 12 two times each? You don't have to do it super tiny. You could just do it right over here if you want. You could do 10 first. I'm going to have you point to it below and you are going to put a penny on e each of the numbers that I say. So how much is a penny worth? One. One cent. That's correct. Okay. I am going to say eight. Nope. Put the penny on it. Eight. There you go. Two. Four. Seven. One. Five. That's old you are. <laughs> Six. And nine. Great job. Woo Wait, High five. One more. Oh, three. <laughs> High five. I thought I had one too many pennies. We're gonna do first, second, and third. So I'm gonna have you cut out these boxes and I'm gonna read you the story. Here, you know what I'll go ahead and do? I'll cut. 
half this off. That way, while I'm reading the story, you can work on cutting these boxes out. And then I am going to have you glue in what happens first, what happens second, and what happens third in the story, okay? For math, we use the Good and the Beautiful Math K. We are on part two of the course, and we are on lesson 73. So we're at the beginning of this book. We still have quite a bit to go for the rest of the year. But today we are doing penny practice. And full disclosure, we don't do all of the daily dose. We already do calendar time in the morning with everybody um, and they practice writing the dates on like the journal entries and we stopped doing the place value chart a while ago. Um, so yeah, just full disclosure on that. <laughs> and then um, we do have her practice counting and we are practicing counting seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Past lessons, you learned how to add onto five. You also learned how to add with pennies. Today, we are going to practice both together. So we have our chalkboard 10 frame from the math activity box, and we are going to lay three pennies. Do you know how much money this is? One. Well, each one is worth one, so how much is three pennies going to be? Three cents. Now I want you to solve the addition problems on the next page using the 10 frame and the pennies. Write the answer at the end of the problem and don't forget to write the cent symbol after the number. So we are going to do five cents plus two cents. So can you do five cents on the 10 frame? Put five cents on there. All right, and then it's going to be plus two cents. So we're gonna add two cents to that. And how much is that all together? It is seven. So go ahead and write seven on the page right there. All right, and then we have five cents plus zero cents. So we are going to play a game where we draw two cards from the pile and then you are going to tell me the addition problem and we're going to use the Reckonerac to figure out how much it is. So go ahead and choose two from the pile. Four and you. All right, so how much is four plus zero? It is four. All right, now I'm going to do it. So I have zero plus two and I have two. So you won because you have the highest number, don't you? All right, so you get to keep all these cards. Now go ahead and do it again. Hey. 
<laughs> Cheater. Stop it. So what would this be? Four plus one. And what is that? One, two, three, four, five. Five. Yep. And you can also use the Ragnarok too. Okay. And then I have four plus three. And I have seven. I close my eyes. So it's just you and I. And I tell myself. You'll be back again. When the stars are aligned, we will dance. In the We are going to add these different fruit prices together using the 10 frame and these pennies, okay? So we've got some limes that are two cents. So go ahead and put two cents on the chalkboard frame. Plus a banana that is three cents. So go ahead and put three on the chalkboard frame too. That is five. Right, but then we also have a pear that is two cents, so go ahead and add that as well. And how many is that going to be? Seven. Seven, so go ahead and write seven. So we've got two plus three plus two is seven. All right, and we're going to do that with the rest of these. Spring is coming Alright, we just finished up with math and that was actually kind of a long lesson. <laughs> Lessons aren't typically that long um, and she was kind of starting to get a little frustrated towards the end of it, but we got through it. We are done with math and we are going to go ahead and do a snack time right now. I'm going to help the other two with their work and then we will break for lunch and after lunch we will go on to science. All right, while the kids are eating lunch, I am getting together the materials that we will need for science because we're going to go ahead and do science after lunch. And I utilize Teachers Pay Teachers for our science. Um, we did use the Good and the Beautiful Science unit studies, but for Maddie, since she is a kindergartner, they were a little over her head. And we found that simplifying our science down to be more about her level was easiest for us this year. I'm hoping to use their science curriculum in the future, but for now we are doing Teachers Pay Teachers and I will link below the specific um, science curriculum that we use, but basically every month we do like a new science um, theme and this month's theme is winter and right now we are learning all about ice. So I'm excited to do this experiment with the kids and to show you how I tailor it for my kindergartner. All right, so we have a damp paper towel here and we have a can half filled with crushed ice. All right, so now I am going to add a teaspoon of salt to the ice. Whoa. Whoa. And a half a cup of water. Huh. All right, so you're going to observe what happens to the outside of the can when I do this. Look at the outside. 
company. Keep looking. It turned to ice. Is it turning to ice? <laughs> Look at it. Oh, I can move it. Oof, feel it. <laughs> it you see it, the ice it, crystals it, that are forming it, on the outside? It, 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 yeah. So I want you guys to observe what is happening during this experiment. You two can write it down. Maddie, you can draw what is happening during this experiment, okay? Okay. So you two observe what Nothing. is happening. Mm. No. So the ice on the inside is melting, but what's happening to the outside of this can? While you're doing this, I'm gonna read you the science of Frosty the Tin Can. <laughs> there is water vapor in the air. Sometimes this water vapor condenses on windows, cars. So as you can see, um, our science, I try to just tailor the assignment to her level while the older two are obviously writing sentences and describing things with words. I mostly just have her drawing what she observes in a lot of instances or I'll help her write down the things that need to be said. So that is pretty much what our science is today. We just did that fun little experiment on ice. And we actually took a day off this week and we're going to be doing school tomorrow, which is Saturday, but we don't want to miss any more days. So we're going to do school tomorrow morning as well. And so usually at the end of the week with science, we will do a review of the vocab words and just summarize what we learned that past week and a fun little activity. And that will be the end of that science unit that we do. And we have like a new little unit every week. Well, we're going to end our school day by reading a story, and it was a pretty laid-back day today, which we like laid-back days, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed going through some lessons with us and getting a closer look into what I use for my kindergartner, and I hope to bring you some more videos going through the day with my second grader, my third grader, and also everybody together because I think that that's probably the day, ultimate day in the life is seeing how I balance all three of my kids at three different levels. So I will definitely be doing a video like that soon. So be sure to check out Megan's channel. I'll have her uh, channel linked down below and the playlist and be sure to check out everybody else's videos in the playlist i'm sure that they have some great resources for their kids as well so i hope that you guys what are you pooping <laughs> she just closed her eyes and walked away are you pooping <laughs> I have a poopy diaper to change, so I will be seeing you guys here very soon. Take care. Bye. You look so beautiful. And I'm so lucky to be yours.